everyone. Today we're doing the slide coagulase test for an organism that is suspected of being Staphylococcus, Staphylococcus aureus. Now Staphylococcus aureus is a gram-positive cocci in uh, pears, tetrads, and grape-like clusters. It tests catalase positive like so many other bacteria that are out there. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is do the catalase test, it'd be positive and you would have seen the gram stain. So you would already know the gram stain reaction, morphology and arrangement. And so that would lead us then to this test. This test is done first. It's trying to detect the presence of bound uh, coagulase, the enzyme, uh, enzymes are proteins, and this one is bound to the bacteria's um, cell wall, the outer cell wall, and it is used to bind to a patient's fibrinogen and turn it into fibrin and thus causing the blood to clot. And this is used as a virulence factor because it enables the bacteria to basically hide in the person um, and that way the immune system won't hunt it down and try to get it. So it's used as a hiding mechanism essentially to try to uh, avoid the patient's immune system. So what we need to do first is um, the reagent that we have is uh, rabbit plasma, okay? And um, when we see the plasma, it comes in a box and it, it looks like this. It's got these metal uh, pieces on the top of it and what you do is you take it out and when you look at it, it says to reconstitute with three mils of purified water. We're going to use DI water this time, okay? So we, okay, you take the lip up here, you pull it down, okay? And you take it from around the side. Uh, I know that, <laughs> you know, when you're first learning how to do that, that can be very treacherous. It can rip gloves, it can um, mess up your nails, whatever. <laughs> It's not fun. Um, but you'll notice that there is some on the, the little stopper there. So you don't want to place that on the table. So since we want three mils, we're going to get a pipette here. And I already put it to three mils. Okay, this is not microliters. Okay, this is milliliters. So notice it's got a really big tip, okay? Um, this one can go up to 10, but obviously we're doing three. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going, I have a <clears throat> clean tip on there. I did not set my camera up to see this whole process. Okay, so we're going to take the deionized water. I'm going to press down with my thumb, okay, before I put the tip in. And when it's in the water, I let go with my thumb, see? And it should pull up without any bubbles in it. Hold on, I think I messed that up because I was trying to do it on camera. Let me try that again. All right, <clears throat> here we go. That is not really getting much of anything. This one may be broken. Hold on just a second. Be right back. All right, so now I have a new one. Um, I'm going to check into that other pipette, uh, but okay. I'm going to press down all the way, put this inside the water. I'm going to depress with my thumb all the way before I take it out of the water. And when it comes out, we've got three mils, okay? Oh no. All right. So you don't want your tip to touch the inside of the vial or anything, okay? You're gonna make sure it goes out all the way in there. All right, you'll get rid of the tip by pressing down on the little ejector switch and you cap it back, you swirl. You're gonna label on the, um, either on the glass or the label, and you're gonna label the date, the time, and your initials, and you let it set for 30 minutes, okay? 
I already have one that is made up so we can go ahead and continue on with our experiment. But now this is wet, so I'm going to change those slides. So you want to get clean slides, make sure they're wet. All right, with slides, the shiny part means that that's the bottom of the slide, so you need to turn it over. Now you see that there's an etched part, and that's where you would label um, whatever you're labeling, but not for this test. This test, you're going to label like the previous one was. Um, you put positive QC, and we're going to have a test organism here, and we're going to have um, negative QC. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have, man, that glare is bad. There we go. Um, I'm going to use two different kinds of slides here. So the one on the right here came with a test kit that is for agglutination. I labeled it, but you know, it's a dark background. Okay, so you can kind of see it now. Um, what we're looking for is we're looking for uh, clumping in the suspension once we add the bacteria, and that would equal a positive test. And uh, that is also why uh, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the brown bound coagulase is called clumping factor, okay, because it causes the bacteria to um, adhere to the fibrinogen in the plasma, and this would be the rabbit plasma that we're going to use. Um, in the patient, obviously, it would be human plasma. <clears throat> okay, so the fluids that we're going to use for the positive QC and the test organism are going to be the rabbit plasma, and for the negative QC, we're going to use DI water. Okay, you can also use saline, um, but DI water is fine as well. So the idea with QC is that you always treat it like, oh, sorry, I forgot to swirl on camera. Um, you treat it like it's the patient uh, specimen or the, um, the test organism that you're using, okay? So we're going to do one drop of plasma in the test and the positive QC. Okay, so the plasma, what's it going to do, everybody? It's going to provide the fibrinogen, okay? For the presence of that enzyme to clump with, okay? And now we're going to add the drop of the DI water to... This is two lines with a line through, two horizontal lines with a line through it. Um, that would be the negative, but on this camera, it honestly looks like it's positive, and that's not what's really written. So please be aware that this is negative here. Okay, that's a negative. All right. Now, the reason we use water or saline with the negative QC is because there isn't any fibrinogen for the enzyme to clot with, okay, or to bind with in order to form a clot. So we want to make sure that the bacteria is not a, going to clump on itself, all right, when we add it. So I'm going to take a, whoops, I'm so sorry. Man, this, <laughs> this video is becoming a mess. You know, these are all done live and the mistakes are real, they're funny, but just to show you, they really do happen. It is hard to video and do these reactions around a camera and I do it all myself. So I'm sorry for some of the negative comments that I get from viewers where they say it's not perfect, but life is not perfect. And I'm sorry that you're not watching perfect videos, but um, you know, you roll with the punches and you do what you gotta do. Okay. So <clears throat> this is going to be the positive QC. It's Staph aureus, all right? And I'm going to take this one. Um, I had a plate for something, and so um, it doesn't look like colonies because it's a whole plate. But you want to take the amount of one to, three, um, one to three colonies on your loop. 
the time frame for this reaction to happen is going to be five to 10 seconds. So this is gonna go by really quickly, all right? Um, so we're gonna do the positive QC first. Let's see if I can zoom in while I do this. Probably not. Here we go, all right. So I'm trying to get all of this on there and you're supposed to do a figure eight, figure eight motion, okay, uh, in order to check the glare today is really bad, in order to check uh, to see if this is positive or negative. I'm gonna turn the light off, that's better. Okay, so um, as you can see, there is clotting happening in, in the plasma. You got all these clumps, okay? So the coagulase, the bound coagulase on the bacteria is um, binding with fibrinogen in the in the reagent plasma okay so again we were doing this rocking motion you can put it on a rocker but it's only five to ten seconds so you know that that's not going to be worth it Ugh, give me a break all right so let's try the next one so let me add the plasma and the water. Okay, so this time we're doing the uh, negative QC. So that is staph epidermidis, staphylococcus epidermidis. All right, and that goes into the water. Okay, all you see are the colonies itself on there because it does look like <laughs> it looks like it's clotting um, that should just be the the organism being introduced into the water probably added too much but see as I'm rubbing it the bacteria is going throughout it's not clumping it's going away it's spreading out okay whereas with the positive QC that we saw the background gets clear and the bacteria clump okay whereas this one those clumps are going away from having taken a lot of colonies and put them in there okay so it's suspended. I know this is looking pretty bad now. Okay, and so now what I wanted to do is I wanted to add my test organism here to see if it looks like the negative or the positive QC. So you get to tell me what you think this organism is. All right, so this is with the plasma now, okay. I can't seem to get this one, <laughs> this one piece. I used a needle part of my loop instead of the loop, but <clears throat> if we swirl it around, oh goodness, I'm really shaky today, sorry. If we swirled it around, we don't see more clumping than what the original bit was that we added, okay? There's still, there's this cloudiness in the background. It's not getting clear, it's getting more cloudy because the bacteria are going away from the initial clump that I added, okay? So that's not a clumping, um, clumping factor, uh, clumping with the uh, fibrinogen, okay? This one has a clearer background and the clumps 
are forming more, this one is just kind of breaking apart, okay? So let's do the other type of slide. All right, this slide we have, um, we're gonna zoom out a little bit. We've already labeled it's going to be the positive QCs on the left, negative QCs on the right. Again, it's two lines with a diagonal line through it, making it negative, and the test is on the bottom. So this time we're going to use a different test organism. All right, so again, the positive QC is Staph aureus. I put three colonies on here. And I'm going to add that. It doesn't even seem like it's coming off onto the slide. Okay, there's some in there. All right. Now I'm going to add the um, negative QC. That's Staphylococcus epidermidis. Okay. Hopefully we'll get some good looking results on this type of card as well. Oh, there's some that came off, that's good. And now I'm going to add the test organism and we'll see what, what it looks like. All right, so there's my test organism. Doesn't look like it's really coming off, does it? There's some in there. All right, this might not be as reactive as we want it to be on the card. Okay, so we're going to rotate it This should be ten, five to ten seconds again. Um, if you'll notice the positive QC is clumping. The negative QC just kind of stayed where it was. It didn't really clump. And this bottom one here. There are some clumps in there, but you can't really see them very well on the camera. The bottom one is supposed to be positive because I put Staph aureus in there too. Okay, I just don't think much of it came off of my loop, but you can see there's a few in there. Okay, so um, this is what it looks like on the um, a test kit slide. Okay, so you have the microscope slide versus the test kit slides. You can use whichever one you want. Um, either is fine, and um, hopefully you'll get the right results. Again, um, you want to make sure that the background is becoming clearer. So if you're using a white test slide, like these can come in a white background, that's not really a great idea because it's hard to see. Against the back, a, a dark background like our bench here, our test bench is black um, with, a clear, with a clear microscope slide, that's a really uh, easy way to see everything. All right, I hope uh, you enjoyed the show. <laughs> And I will catch you next time. If you liked this and you found it helpful, um, please subscribe. If you found that uh, you did have a, um, by the way, if you found that you did have a test patient that was negative, in order to confirm that it's a true negative, you would want to put it into the, or you would want to perform this, uh, the tube coagulase test, which tests for free. Coagulase, which is an enzyme that gets secreted by the organism, and it binds with prothrombin, and that together binds to fibrinogen and breaks it down to fibrin and forms a clot. So that is a longer test. It takes four hours to 24 hours. You have to keep checking it while you're incubating it. Um, and it is done in a small test tube like this. Um, you can use a blood banking dry block uh, set at 37 degrees, or you can use a O2 incubator set at 37 degrees. All right, thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye.